so far. So how many of you are from Mumbai, actually? Mumbai, Mumbai. All right, so a lot of people coming from outside, different part of India, as well as outside of India. Good. So right after the lunch, huh? Everybody is sleepy. <laughs> I'll try not to bore you that much. So you fell asleep. <clears throat> okay, I think we have to wait just one more minute before we start. Of authoring experience out of the box. And media management with, with Drupal 7 or Drupal 8, the media module is there, and uh, there are a couple of other related solutions which really help us to manage all the media. Uh, we can upload images, drag and drop, put in videos, uh, <clears throat> whatever we like to do, we can do. And it's very, very powerful. And with S3 integration, you can even just export all your media into, uh, into Amazon Cloud. And uh, so it's very, very powerful. It's very hard to replicate and in reinvent the whole wheel again in some other system. So. <clears throat> And communicating to third-party APIs, uh, enterprise integration, which comes in, so uh, your Drupal backend can still uh, talk to many APIs and, and can get you data from them. Uh, securing user data, for sure. Drupal is very secure. Uh, we, as a community, work very hard to make it safe, keep it safe. So whatever we are saying, saving, we, we make sure things are behind a lock, if they are supposed to be behind a lock. And uh, <clears throat> it, 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 it helps put that lock in. And, and securing user stuff, because that could be another wheel to, to do. Uh, structuring content types and taxonomies. So we, we take these things for granted when we are actually a Drupal developer, but uh, taxonomies, users, content types, uh, when, when we look into it as, as prospect of website building, they are so easy in Drupal, and they are right in the core, and we get that functionality out of the box. Creating new content types, taxonomies, defining, defining relations between things. Uh, that is much easier than any other framework, and it's all UI based. So that is a very powerful tool while while building different sections or <coughs> uh, of your website here, or or even your mobile app. <coughs> uh, so decoupled way, like, is it really successful? So to 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 prove that, like NPR and Netflix uh, are the biggest decoupled examples in the whole world. Uh, NPR's backend system that powers a lot of uh, different. Uh, different uh, systems, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's been there for 12 years, and uh, they are really happy about it. And uh, Netflix as well, uh, they, uh, they, they built an API system which feeds to all their different kind of apps, syncs all data from all different apps. It's uh, just, a, uh, just a distributed system they have built as a microservice layer. <coughs> so what results are we going to get like, out of it? Like, uh, uh, great front end. Uh, so you can use your favorite front end now. Uh, any framework you like in, in UI and CSS, JavaScript based. You, can, you like Bootstrap, you just take Bootstrap in. Uh, you, did, you use as many components as you need and you, you just use uh, that in your pro project. If you like a new framework, you like Bourbon, just use Bourbon. Whatever framework you like, you just define and use it. You don't have to wait for a new theme to come in in Drupal. You just don't have to make your own theme compatible with it and just to make sure that every DAM element in the whole CMS is working with it. Define the elements that you need, and that's it. That's what you need. You'll get great front end, great websites with responsive design. Uh, very fast. Uh, Angular uh, footprint is very, very small, and uh, the, the Angular single page applications, the websites that you'll get, uh, are very, very fast and responsive. With Ionic as well, it, it, Ionic is the only framework that uh, can compete with, uh, with, kind of like compete with, like I said, 90 to 100 uh, in competition with the native UI that you get for iOS and Android. And uh, with, with Angular, you also get Angular material design, so which is, again, a very, very large framework on top of it. You can use that in your projects, and you can get material design implemented out of the box. And <clears throat> not much to, uh, like, you don't have to deal with Drupal theming at all, and it will just work out of the box. Uh, you can build mobile apps, as I described, with Ionic, and that will help you. Uh, APIs that you're going to build uh, out of your old Drupal site uh, that can power multiple systems in your enterprise. Uh, that you can build mobile apps, you can build uh, different desktop apps, whatever you like, you can build out of them, uh, whatever, whatever are your needs are. So you have a clean set of APIs because you will be defining them for your site. You will have them, and you you can even make them open so the other people can utilize and build upon them or integrate those things into their existing systems, and uh, the other teams can be uh, can use those as well. 
uh, easier upgrades uh, for sure. Uh, now that uh, your core could stay really small, because a lot of uh, modules and uh, and dependencies in your Drupal uh, are are about <clears throat> about the theming or about the user interface of your project. So once your uh, core is protected, your core is small. Uh, you can even uh, like I won't say like skip them, but like you can even skip small upgrades, uh, even small security patches. So if you want to put your website behind a VPN and just expose the feeds that you need, you don't even need to upgrade them. Like you you should I will say, but like there is no urgent need to upgrade them because nobody can reach them then. If you put them behind a VPN, your only your company can access that. You you already putting putting a lock on top of it on your on your APIs. And uh, only you know how to communicate with them. You go in, you log in your VPN, and you make changes to your content and everything. Much secure, so easier upgrades. Don't have to uh, worry much about it or sweat about it. As, oh, my site is going to down, go down. My user's data is going to get stolen out of the box today. So those kind of fears can, can go away. And that helps a lot. Uh, we, uh, that, this was like easier upgrades. And uh, this, this is like a really good selling point, if you tell me. Um, we we have done it in past. Like this is this is the key because like at overnight when we get so many security upgrades, like the whole enterprise uh, is shaken off. By last year, we had a couple of big security upgrades came in uh, Drupal, which were really urgent, and so that made sweat a lot of people uh, because overnight you have to make the de deployments, and sometimes deployments in enterprise is not that fast. It's not like I'm going to give them my deployed code and they're going to put it in like three hours or two hours even. They have a schedule. They have to follow. They have different things in pipeline. So, so those things, uh, if if we can protect and get some timeline on it, uh, that is much better. Faster development cycles. Uh, that is, I think, is again very important. Uh, you are dealing with uh, two different teams here. Uh, the theming team can uh, work on their own, and the backend team can provide the, those stuff in a APIs. Uh, so they are independent. They are not much dependent. They are dependent, but like not not much dependent. Theming team can uh, still work on the UI that they need, and <clears throat> that will uh, that will definitely run into faster development cycles. And it, it's a much lesser amount of code that you'll be writing this way as well. OK, it's not all a ride in the park. There are some problems as well. So <clears throat> talking about like what, what, what issues you can have with decoupled Drupal. Uh, so very first is like you lose multilingual. So uh, out of the box, you lose it. You can still implement it. You have to reinvent a little bit in, in Angular or via your APIs. Uh, so you lose multilingual, which is already there in Drupal, and, it's, and our core uh, team works very, very hard to, to get that support in Drupal, and it's p part of seven, eight, every, every Drupal, you just make it multilingual, whatever you want, the way you want. You have to reinvent that in, in, in doing it in your, in your new website, the Angular or the mobile apps that you're writing. But it's still possible, it's just extra amount of work that you have to do. Uh, accessibility, uh, we, we add a lot of accessibility features to our markups in Drupal out of the box. And those will be lost, or you have to learn them and implement in your code again. Uh, that is another thing that you will miss. Uh, rebuild uh, layout management, like <clears throat> uh, with panels and, and things like panels, uh, display suit you. You can just drag drop interfaces. Uh, once you have things set up, you can just uh, push one block on top, one block at bottom. So that will be gone. Uh, you will be dealing with HTML divs and then part of uh, HTML. So you may have to rewrite your layout management or just define it in a way so it could be used uh, better. Uh, I, I will discuss that later on, like how you can do a little, little bit and uh, how you can define templates in your code and still use them in your new Drupal site. Uh, but like you have to reinvent that, which is already there with panels. But it's much complicated. So I think in some cases, uh, it's much better to get out of it than to uh, be deep inside of it. Uh, accessibility improvements made to core area d data and, and schema.org attributes which were added in Drupal 8, that will be gone. And uh, like it's important to few organizations and people. And uh, you have to do it yourself in your HTML then. So reinventing the wheel again. You can export them with your data, uh, but it doesn't pr produce very pretty outputs there. So uh, you, you have to think about it, how, to, how you want to handle that in your project. It may or may not be important in your project, but uh, uh, Drupal 8 does that already for you. Uh, so discussing a little bit about Drupal architecture, like what will uh, you require in your Drupal 7 or 
uh, Drupal 8 site to, to do it, to have an Angular website off of it. And uh, what, what does it make sense for us? To, what to use? Uh, so you can do it with Drupal 7 or Drupal 8, what I'm writing here. Uh, but basically, you can do it with, with your Drupal 5 plus website. Even in Drupal 6, the services module exists. So if you have an old Drupal 6 website, uh, you can still use that. And uh, you can, you can uh, use services or any uh, data source. We use data source module to export out the JSON feeds and feed them to your different systems. Uh, RESTful module is very popular in Drupal 7. Uh, that can uh, help you uh, restify all the entities and uh, I will, I will describe REST later, and services module is similar. Uh, it, you can, you can uh, fetch data out of user, taxonomy, menus, views. Uh, so all the basic uh, portions are covered with service RESTful or services module. I, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll choose you, make, make you choose one. I, I like services better, but RESTful is uh, much more advanced uh, if you talk to me about it. Uh, views data source, if you just want to do read-only operations, you don't have much REST. Uh, like you don't want to send data, update data, delete data. Uh, they don't need those kind of operations. You can just use views data source to export out field, feeds. You can build feeds using using views and just export out feeds using views data for source and uh, utilize them in your app. Uh, doing that, you may need to write a little bit of custom code if you are uh, using a lot of uh, reference entities. That way, you have to maybe write a little bit of custom code to handle that. Uh, maybe or maybe not you won't even need it uh, so you don't have much have to worry about it so web services uh, so web services like expose of raw data uh, at certain URLs so you you hit a particular URL make get request you get it out of it could be JSON XML whatever uh, header you requested it for uh, so web services is just that so you you fetch data out of it and that just works and when we say REST API, that's like an architectural pattern that we define uh, to, to do more operations just to read, just out of, so not just get operation, but you can also do delete, update, and create. And so you can create data, you can update data using that. You can always fetch data. Uh, that's important part of it. Uh, so REST API uh, helps you with that. So you can decide whatever kind of architecture you need here, and you can you can go for a read-only solution or a REST API, which will be much more completer. And with Drupal 8, uh, you can use uh, web services, which is in which is part of core, and uh, you can use Whisky Initiative as well. So Drupal 8 does it out of the box. You don't have to install any uh, custom or uh, contrib modules out of uh, out of the box. It, it you just have to enable a couple of modules that you have, and uh, then you can uh, build feeds out of the views. Or, or use the entities to, to build out the feeds. Uh, and that will just work. Which much more cleaner than Drupal 7, by the way. Uh, any questions so far? Yeah. So I'm not wrong, like uh, using the Angular uh, this, uh, front end that we uh, We can also have something like progressive decoupling, right? So that we can have just a part of the web page with Angular and the rest of it through the Drupal feed. We'll discuss it in the end. I have one slide on that. Yeah, we will discuss a little bit on that. So this is all about like complete decoupling and like re redoing the whole front end of your site and quickly and saving the budget. <laughs> so so like when you are thinking about decoupling, uh, there are a couple of things comes in mind and there are a couple of ways uh, in in which the data can flow and uh, <clears throat> So like for this is majorly for like read only systems we are we are making data flow from Drupal uh, to your to your apps in this diagram. So what it does is like you have a Drupal 7 site or a Drupal 8 site and you are getting data out of it and uh, you may put an intermediate database layer in between. Uh, you can use CouchDB or MongoDB. So this is the architecture that uh, could be more useful for much larger systems. Uh, if you have a website with a couple of thousand views a, a day or uh, couple 10,000 of views a month, you don't need this architecture. Uh, but for larger enterprise systems, you, you need such kind of architecture that can have an intermediate layer who can handle a, lo a lot of requests. Uh, so th that could be a Mongo layer or a CouchDB layer that you can put in. CouchDB is much better, I say, because uh, you, get a, uh, you get a web service part out of it already in CouchDB, so you can just query it directly and, and get data. Uh, so and then you have the endpoint which will be querying your your intermediate layer and uh, which can give or send data to your Angular website or your React website or even your app. Uh, 
So, so this is like data model for like large organizations or whatever. Whenever you think it's important for you, you can have it. Uh, so, what you'll do, you will uh, you will fetch, you will push data from your Drupal 7 or Drupal 8 site, and you will send it to your CouchDB or MongoDB databases. Uh, you can use QAPI and, and use Drush or Cron to, to handle that process for you. So whenever you are creating new items, you are updating content, uh, that can push it to Couch TV and, uh, or, or MongoDB, and then uh, that can be served as uh, REST endpoints for your Angular or React app. <coughs> so this is something uh, lullabot.com did. Uh, they put a uh, Couch TV layer in between. And what they do is like they push data into CouchDB. We are also doing a similar architecture in one of our enterprise projects. Uh, we are uh, planning to use MongoDB because that's standard in our organization. And that handles the data updates and, and keeps all the data. And then it pushes it into, into your React or Angular app. Uh, so the benefit of using it, you don't have to bootstrap. Uh, you ha don't have to ping your Drupal uh, API all the time. You can just use a much uh, faster API built by Mongo or Couch. They're file-based and they're much faster in response time. And the other uh, data flow model that you can define is like, uh, instead of defining a new uh, new Mongo or a Couch TV layer in between, you can just use the caching layer. Uh, so Drupal caching is great. We've used caching, Drupal caching, entity caching, all of them you will be using. Uh, so caching layer can handle those requests quickly. Uh, so if they are like read-only data, you can get them much faster if, they are ca if that data is cached. And uh, you can use the Drupal's caching layer and the whole infrastructure to do that. Uh, that will again serve the purpose and uh, you don't have to spend a lot of time redefining the middle layer and logic to via queues to push data or update data into a new database. So that's much faster and easier to build, Dataflow 2, I say. Uh, <clears throat> so a little bit about Angular, like how the API calls are going to be. Uh, so you, you make a get request, that is a API URL, headless uh, API blogs. Uh, this thing gives me a list of all my blog items. And then uh, you, you make a get request, and then when it's successful, it gets, gives me all the data, and I've saved that into my scope.blogs, that's Angular variable, and which I'm going to use later in my, in my template. And uh, that's it. That's pretty much like which will retrieve my code. We don't actually do it this way. We, we actually do it via services or factories. Uh, but to, to explain it better, I have, I have put it in a way so you can see the exact get call and how you, uh, how you, how you define variable in a scope. Uh, so you, we actually, as I was saying, you actually do it in via services. So you define a service uh, class factory, and then you return the function, and then you, you make a success call in there back in your controller and define the data. So <coughs> Uh, fetching a single node, uh, so that's again uh, you're again defining a new factory, and uh, you you you're defining a function get node, and that will uh, that that will get you a JSON object of your particular node, whatever you're requesting. So this kind of uh, function could be used for your uh, single page, single node that you are referring to, like node slash one two three. Uh, you make a call to that, that will make a call to this particular URL. It will send back data, and you will display that data on your Angular site. So it's, it's very, very similar in logic to what you do in Drupal. <coughs> and uh, the data we get back from Drupal is, is uh, that this is a data source module that I'm using, views data source as a JSON output. Uh, so what it's giving me all the all the items that I requested in JSON format. So <coughs> nodes uh, and title, description, image. So these are like five fields that I defined. I, I need to display them in my uh, in my list. So it, I'm just getting these data, these items from the list. My title of the blog, my description, my image URL, and image URL can even use uh, your uh, your image cache. So that that is much help, more more helpful here because you don't have to reinvent the whole wheel and uh, getting uh, restyled images. So so things like image cache out of the box you can use with views, and that will help you building it. Uh, and the rest of the things that you will require to build a particular item or a particular uh, <coughs> template, you can just fetch it out using views module. Uh, <coughs> and uh, the previous data what we saw uh, in, in that blog output, you can, you can see in, in Angular representation what we have here, uh, we, we are putting a, a date, date field like when this blog was published, and a blog source URL, that which is the image. Uh, and we are defining image responsive. It's, it's a bootstrap theming at, at the moment, so it's using image bo re responsive bootstrap class and MD5 column. And MD6, we have uh, this, we are making, a, um, making the title as a link over here. 
So uh, like Drupal, you can, uh, you can define uh, uh, these kind of URLs in Angular as well. Uh, so node slash uh, this particular hash URL can, can get me uh, to any node, uh, node full ID. I can define that in, in Angular's uh, router. So we, we, we can define those kind of things say, similarly to as we define in Drupal menu API. <clears throat> and then we are, we are showing description here and then a, a read more button. And so this whole code will actually uh, print me out a, a list of blogs that I require for my blogs page. Uh, so this is the amount of template that you have to build. That is it. Uh, this, will, uh, this will just, re <clears throat> ng repeat will just alter through all my API and it will, uh, all my array and it will just build me a, we will do it in demo, but I was just trying to show you how clean the code is. Like how lesser amount of code you have to, uh, you have to modify or or write to get it done. Or if you have to add a new class, you just look into it. You add a new class, and your whole page is set out. Uh, routing uh, Angular has uh, its routing framework, so you we use that to define inside of Angular route. So I prefer like not using a Drupal routing uh, and just try to export that into Angular. It's much faster if you define your, your routes, at least, in your Angular app. Uh, so you can, you can use the route provider to, to write route your apps, write your, all your uh, routes, and then they can refer to def different controllers and the partials, theming partials that you're using. Uh, so 404.html, faq.html, about.html, so these are all my, uh, all my HTML partials that I'm calling <coughs> and, and pushing data. Uh, so integrating with clients, like, we already discussed like we do it. So what integration? So we can build like ionic based code of apps for sure. Uh, that's that's again Angular kind of and and you can build Angular based websites. So Angular website is something I, I really want to focus upon because it can give you a new website out of the box uh, without upgrading to any uh, anything like Drupal 8 or maybe in some cases even Drupal 7. Uh, you can just have a new website, have a new front end. Uh, don't have to spend a lot of money. Just have to write your API and and feed data to your new Angular website. Uh, uh, there is another uh, reference. So this is uh, for Angular Drupal. You can use services module with, with this particular framework. Uh, it's written by a community member. And uh, this is very nice, actually. It, it, it gives you all the operations you have to do in, uh, in your Angular uh, for like node editing, fetching a node, uh, creating a node. All that is already written here. So you can just use these functions, define it there. And, and actu actually, just look at the examples and just implement it your own way. That will be helpful. It uses services module and uh, Drupal 7. All right, we'll do some demos, and I, I will hopefully they will work. <laughs> I haven't prepared any videos for offline, so we'll see how it goes. Any questions so far? Yeah. Um, how do you deal with long lists and page pagination um, and filtering? So this is, I, we have the Angular app. Um, <laughs> Problems we have might we might have ten thousand nodes. Yeah. Um, and so if you um, do server side mm -hmm. you do all the Angular filter goodness, you know, because you can only filter on what you return. Yeah. Um, but if you don't, then you have a list of you have to wait a long time. Yeah. So have you guys had to deal with that? Have you but like if you if you want to do like filtering in the whole data list, which is not loaded yet, you have to make a call back to Drupal and, right. and but you can define the filters in your Drupal view and actually retrieve back data by sending views arg filter arguments. So, right. so services let you do that. It lets you send back arguments to your views. So if you're making a get request to a particular view, uh, you can send back filters or, or even search items. So whatever filter you have defined, exposed filters, you are able to send them an argument. Yeah. And Our main problem is, so if you have uh, properties that are nested, Mm -hmm. You can't filter on those for the rest of we use rest of the we don't use services. Okay. So the services can you filter on um, object um, so basically nested properties. You have to give me an example. Okay. Like, oh it's, maybe it's too good. That's for <laughs> so we will do so this is like a basic intermediate course at the moment. <laughs> we can discuss that more later in questions. And how do I get out of it? View Exit presentation mode. So everybody pray that our demos work, huh? <laughs> All right.
<laughs> okay, so uh, I have a, a very simple Drupal 7 website here. Uh, this could be like your corporate website, uh, your, your company's new website or one of the product that you're working on. And you're planning to move it to your Angular site and uh, you like a template. So what I'm going to do is like we have one template right here. Uh, so this is a bootstrap template uh, and this is called business or something. It's on start uh, bootstrap if you want to download it or if you like it. So this is called modern business. So it's a very, very popular template. Uh, it's in bootstrap framework written. Uh, so what you can do is like you can just download the code of it and convert it into your own Angular project. Uh, it uses bootstrap. It's a, it's a very, very lightweight. There is nothing much it does. Uh, so in the website I'm going to show you, I'm not even using ng bootstrap framework. So ng bootstrap is a rewrite uh, for, uh, for Angular elements of the bootstrap framework. So you can use that heavily to build your applications, actually. Uh, that's a much better way of doing it. It, it defines all the directives that you, will, that you can just refer and, and push data into Angular, and uh, much more robust. Uh, but I'm just going to uh, keep it very, very lightweight and just going to use a bootstrap library, CSS and JS files uh, and Angular JS files, just, just out of the box, whatever we get, and, and build our Drupal site. Uh, so this is kind of a uh, site that we have right now. And uh, so, so this is the Angular project at the moment. I use this bootstrap template, which were just HTML files, uh, to build my own Angular project. And uh, it has a couple of files and a couple of sections that we have that we actually feed from our uh, Drupal website. So I'll show you how, how we are feeding them. Uh, so, so first of all, uh, y this is a very simple Angular project. It took me like less than a day to build all this, what I'm going to show you. Uh, I just spent like day before yesterday to, to, to come up with the whole thing. So I was almost able to finish this whole website in, in this theme. So it's not, it's not going to take you very long. Uh, so that is the budget saving for sure. Uh, so what we have, this is our home page as our normal uh, enterprise website has. And we have one description on top. It's, uh, it's about Mumbai DrupalCon. We have a description right here. And we, we are defining three features at the bottom about it. They used to look different, but uh, because on my projector, I have a very <laughs> large screen. So they, they look different. They're responsive. Uh, so we go into our Drupal site to, to check out what we have in there. So in the content section, I, I have a home page I have created. And I'm editing that page. Uh, to, to feed data into my, uh, into my particular, this, this page of the website, the home page of my new web, Angular website. Uh, so I have a Mumbai DrupalCon, that's, I just want to rename my home page, I say, I don't think I want it, I want it DrupalCon Mumbai. And the rest of it looks good. And I'm also defining all my features block here. Uh, so the, these section, this section is also powered by the same page. I'm defining my features block, I have, first one is Bootstrap 3, ready to style and blah blah. Uh, so I, they have drag and drop interface. I can just reorder things. You, you can use your Drupal knowledge to build all fancy things that you want to build and use views to, uh, to make, make it appropriate as per you need for per page. You can use views to make any output the way you like. Uh, so we are using that. And um, this is another feature I'll, I'll show you in the end. So we, we made a change to a title of the, con of the page. And it's called DrupalCon Mumbai now instead of uh, Mumbai DrupalCon. So the same way I, I change my in, make change to my CMS site. And now I come to my Angular site, and I, uh, the data should be updated as it is fetching from the same source. So it's, it's, it's DrupalCon Mumbai now, and which I just updated. So you are updating your website uh, just as your CMS, and, but you are f actually feeding it to another system, which is much faster and much robust and uh, easy to maintain. I'll show you the code in a minute. And the other thing you can actually do here is you can define your, uh, your theming outcomes. Uh, so that is like a little tricky, and uh, you have to give it a little bit of thought how you want to do it. But you can define templates in your, in your items, and you can actually uh, use them to, to assign classes and the way you want to customize it, as we do in Drupal as well, like to, to give control to, to the person who is editing content or who is managing the website. So they don't have to get their hands dirty uh, with the code. Uh, for example, for, for this home page, um, we are using, uh, we, we sometimes we want to use a well class for, for these three features that we are showing up here. Uh, by the way, we also change the order of them, if you remember. Uh, so, so for these three feature items, uh, you, can def you, have, uh, you can build ability to, to have different uh, theming elements in them. Uh, for example, this is using a well feature. If you are familiar with bootstrap theme, uh, well is uh, a class that you can define. It, it gives a nice padding layer over it. So if I say, like, I don't want extra padding on my feature section now, and I say, we can just define that as a new field in our, in our UI, 
And you can even create a content type that can drive your whole UI. And you just create a content, or you can just create a new, new settings page where you can define all your Angular UI theming related changes that you want to do. And just push them into your configuration variables on your Angular project. Use them across your whole theming. Uh, that way you can have a conf configurable theming as well. So you, don't, you are not even controlling your theming from your Drupal CMS. Uh, you are controlling content as well as theming. So as we remove the, uh, the, the well element from it, so now the well class is not coming because I said I don't want my padding. So this way you can define all the UI and theming part of your Angular product. So it's, it's giving you more control, not just uh, taking control from you, but it it's actually can give you same amount of control, if no, not more control, I'll say. And uh, so this is, again, a portfolio section. So every uh, corporate site has a portfolio section. Uh, so we have a portfolio content type that I've built. And uh, what it does, it, 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 it has a couple of uh, portfolio items in it. You can add a new portfolio item, and it will show up over here. Let's try to add one, actually. So what I'm doing, I, I have whatever content I have for portfolio, I'm creating a view. I'm exporting it as a JSON feed. And whenever a new portfolio item is added, it automatically pushes it to uh, that, uh, that particular view. Yeah. Call it DrupalCon. We choose an image for this new portfolio. And let's use this data chart image that we had. And once we add it to this list, uh, it will actually show up in. I'm not even sure if this is a URL. Oh, this is a URL. So you see, this is my views <coughs> output, which I have, uh, I have an endpoint at API portfolio.json. So I'm making a get request to it. So the new item that I just added uh, gets added to my JSON feed. And my, my site is actually feeding upon it. So whenever I'm going to make a refresh to my page, uh, it's actually going to load nothing, really. <laughs> OK, here we go. So on the portfolio, I see a new item is showing up now. So, so, so this is this is the way like you can you can manage content in your CMS and still power your new UI. So this is a brand new website that we have written, which is CMS driven uh, in Angular and with using the latest items and still having the control of a CMS. Uh, so this is again FAQ section that I have built. Uh, so j this is just to demo like any other website. We have a FAQ web uh, section in our websites. Uh, so what you can use, you can actually use field collections to power such kind of sections. Uh, you can have a content type, you define a field collection, you have unlimited fields in it, unlimited field collections. Uh, so let's try to edit this, uh, this particular page and see how it structures. So if I go to my FAQ, sorry, block, FAQ section. So that's a content type right here. And what I'm doing, I'm, I'm creating a view, again, to export out all my FAQ questions and answers. And that is building that whole page. Click on Edit. And you see at the bottom, we have a couple of uh, field collections. There's a question that's an answer, question, answer. And uh, you, you can sort them here. It, 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 uh, it, it keeps that in mind, what sorting order it is. You can, you can define different kind of sorts, whatever you like. Or you can even define a new integer elements here if you want some say, different kind of sorting. Uh, that can, th those are all uh, already part of views, so you can use views to, to handle the rest of it. And so this is all your content that you're building, and it's in same structure as you have. And once you make a change over here, th this page will automatically update uh, once the website. <clears throat> so you can you can have so the the code behind it is is very very uh, tiny. I'll show you. So we are looking at the FAQ section, and the code I have is like 35 lines of code that I have to write for that whole template. So I have a container class, which is a <coughs> bootstrap class, and we have this header section, which is frequently asked questions, FAQs. And then this is my code for, for all my FAQs. That's it. What I'm doing, I'm iterating through my FAQs in my FAQ array, and I'm displaying the title, and I'm displaying the question over here, and, and displaying the answer at the bottom. Using bootstrap elements, which are part of bootstrap, using the same HTML divs and classes. And uh, this whole page will build out of it. If I need to make a change to a class, I just make change. Uh, the themer will go in and make change to this template element. And I will have that update. All right. Any questions around this? Anything? 
Yeah. Uh, how are you feeling that that question and answer uh, with a view with a view you created Jason or how do you view that? Oh yeah, exactly. We we created a view and we created an endpoint call fq.json and it gives me all my questions and answers from Drupal. That is the way that Drupal fits the application, just my views. The, this application is fed by views. You can use whatever you like, the, the options that, that we discussed. You can feed it via views, you can feed it via services API, you can feed it via RESTful API. So you have a couple of options. So as per your needs, if you have, but like this is very fast way of feeding the views. You can, you can only define the, the, the items that you need. I, if I need just a question and an answer field, I can just define question answer quickly and get a field out of it. Yeah, listing, fetching data out of Drupal in a in whatever container you need, it could be very very fast. And uh, so, if you look at my FAQ controller, this is my controller code. It's making a call to FAQ service, uh, which is uh, defined in my services somewhere. And this is making a GET request to this particular API that we just looked at. And it's passing data back into my FAQ controller, defining my FAQs array, and which I am feeding into my FAQ.html, actually, right here. So we are iterating through the whole array over here, and we are just uh, showing the question and answer. So whenever you are making changes to the view or your content, it's going to be updated over here. So the basic idea is like with very less amount of code, you can actually put out those basic pages or basic website that you have in Drupal or an old version of Drupal into, into a newer framework like Angular or React, whatever you choose. We'll discuss about that later too. But yeah, that, that gives you ability. Uh, so this is the pricing HTML that we have. We have a pricing page. So most of the websites also have a uh, product page which they're trying to sell. So pricing tables uh, can also uh, be defined like this. So this is using a Bootstrap to do it. And you have four content items I'm, I'm exporting out as my, which are my products right now. So if you have products, you can, you can do it too. And we'll, we'll discuss about products in a second. And right now I have like four products and I have one unpublished product. So if I make it publish over here, so my view uh, takes care of my published and unpublished content. So once I publish it, there will be five content items instead of four. So they will automatically appear. Uh, it's responsive, so it will take care of the responsiveness automatically. And uh, as we go, it's bootstrap, and it's, it, it behaves like that. Um, so yeah, adding, editing, uh, any kind of content, feeding it to your site is quite simple this way. Uh, so you can still use your all taxonomy items, all uh, user, all content items, whatever you need, and just feed it to your site. Simple site for now. And so this is the blog listing page, actually. we. Uh, we demoed, uh, we, we saw in the code before. So we, we have a, an image, title, and a description. So whenever a new blog is added to it or whatever changes are made to it, it will show up over here. And it looks much better on a larger screen though. <laughs> right now it's, it's squished out, so it's the image coming on top and the description is at bottom. All right, so, so this can power all the services. Uh, so you can all even uh, define your own services if you have some, some different kind of content submission or stuff. Uh, so what you can do, you can define your service endpoint, you can uh, push data to it, and that will take care of your contact form or whatever way you like it to be done. If it's a web form, web form services are different. And for, for the products, we can talk about, uh, in Drupal 7, there is a mod module for uh, commerce services. Uh, that can take care of your, if you are trying to uh, build your commerce website into, into Angular, that is possible using that module. Uh, what it does, you, you can have a cart defined services. Uh, you, it will create a new cart for anonymous or authenticated user. And it will, you can keep adding items to it, retrieve it back, show it the data on the Drupal site. A lot of people are doing that already. Uh, but yeah, that, that's again very powerful if you have a commerce site and you want to put a new face on it uh, using Drupal 7. All right, so that's pretty much with the demos. If you if you like to see anything, but in particular, I can I can show that, uh, like if any questions around it. Yeah. So what are your thoughts? So like, when would you like to go with the mobile app versus Angular JS website? Okay. 
all right so mobile app is uh, okay i was not getting into mobile app because angular is same as mobile app. ionic is same as angular i don't uh, differentiate them so the same code same stuff you will write there you just have to uh, change the instead of div you are using uh, directive of an ionic framework so that's the only difference by the way and um, so if you your organization has a need for a mobile app you you will build that first of all you don't have to like the, the real question is that when you need it if you need it you have you can build it in ionic but like see yeah yeah so uh, so this is a website website should can you repeat the question because we can't really hear yes yes uh, so so the question is like when should we go with the app and when should we go with a website uh, so so to answer that really like in general you you go with the app uh, with a particular set of functionality that you want to solve you you want to solve a particular problem or so your website may be solving 10 problems uh, you, you're taking care of 10 things, but you're in app, you may just want to do two and be very, very focused on what you are doing over there. Uh, so in that case, you can define those cases, you can use those APIs that you're already building and, and just go through it. Uh, app can do much better, it can take care of push notifications, it can, it can uh, take care of the communication between users and, and you, you can get them back to it by pinging their phone and notifications. And it can use device camera, it can use device capabilities as INIC can, Cordova can. So, so those things when you need that kind of interaction, you can go with a mobile app. Uh, when you don't need hardware interaction, you don't need push notification, and you don't uh, think that like, you want to make lesser functionality on the app and you can just find the website. Then in that case, you can have a new Angular front end and an Angular website. Like that's my view of it. Everybody has their own views about it. And <clears throat> So, so the same, in the same manner, you can actually feed your, your Ionic app. I can, I can show you one app that I'm working on. And it's gonna... So Ionic app is, is very similar. You define your controller, you define your HTML uh, templates, and uh, you, you just use Ionic tool to compile it for iOS or Android framework. That's the only difference. And you use uh, the, the directives, the theming element that Ionic provides to make it uh, almost same as uh, as your responsive, uh, in, in a form of a responsive design, but it's it's almost uh, similar to uh, to the native elements of iOS and Android that you get. Uh, <clears throat> let me try to find something. Uh, so, the server is closed. This is actually an INIC app, which is. <clears throat> This app is actually fetching data from a CO code-based Drupal site. So this is a Drupal site. Uh, what it's doing, it, it's fetching uh, all the sessions for a particular conference, and it has a couple of dates and stuff as well. So what we are doing, we are fetching that data. And uh, in, in Ionic, it gives us capability, uh, capability to use some sort of uh, offline database in your device as well. When you need that, you do that. Uh, so here, we are actually relying upon an offline database. We are using Luke.js to to have an intermediate layer. Uh, we are saving data in Luke, and we are making calls to it. You can get a particular um, uh, fields out of it. You can sort data accordingly. Uh, it's a, it's a file-based uh, database system like Mongo or anything. You can also use SQLite uh, in, in your Cordova apps, but uh, a file-based system is more flexible. You can just save your JSON object into one, uh, one go and just make a call. And uh, So here, this is the INIC app. Uh, this is using material design in Angular, ng material framework it is using. And uh, you, you see nice wave animations and the things that you, that you, <coughs> that you see. Uh, you, you can compile it for Android or your iOS devices, and it will uh, work as a Cordova app or a native app out of the box. Uh, but yeah, so these things are all out of in so open source. Uh, this is the all nice animations you see, all tabs, uh, these menu items. Uh, everything you see that is part of uh, Ionic or ng. Uh, ng angular project the angular material design project sorry so so they are they are all used here and uh, you can have very nice interactions very nice uh, 60 frame per second or like almost 60 frame per second animations in your mobile device as as expected in any native app uh, so yeah you, you can you can do that using this any other questions related to INIC? I yes question. At, uh, in your beginning of the session you told us uh, as a content developer we may have to uh, face some problem to find out 
the GPL, this GPL, uh, I have to modify or something. But I'm learning Drupal 8. So I saw Drupal 8 is using uh, two templating, you know. Mm -hmm. So they have a nice debugging system. Yeah. So if I uh, run the debug system, so there are a lot of template commenting in our, if I inspect the browser, I can find out easily what template should I modify yeah. and how can I modify this. Right. My question is if maybe uh, I I heard a couple of days ago uh, Ionic uh, beta 2 release mm -hmm. and uh, Ionic, uh, Ionic 2 beta using Angular 2. Right. So you uh, you show it us maybe Angular 1. Yeah. Uh, so as a new, uh, uh, which version should I choose? Should I go with Ionic 2 and Angular 2? Okay. Uh, I was waiting for the part where you actually come to the question. Okay. Uh, I, have, I have another question. <laughs> yes. How can we get the uh, original mobile app like dot .apk file mm -hmm. or for iOS? Okay. All right. Uh, so there are two questions. The first question is uh, you should go with Ionic 1 or Ionic 2. Uh, for now, I'll say go with Ionic 1 because uh, that is only the production ready. Uh, <clears throat> environment that they have and it's using angular 1.3 or 1.4 now and which is fine for now I, I think I don't think like a lot of people are using angular 2.x there's a huge learning curve between angular 1 and angular 2 first of all yeah so I haven't jumped through that curve either yet I am like more towards react than angular with angular 2.x like you better be with react which is very similar react and angular 2.x is kind of where the direction they're heading towards that's definitely future and great uh, but for now I will suggest personally angular uh, 1.x 1.4 or something and ionic 1 which, which is stable and where all the support is around you you are a new new to it person like me I can still figure out the things but a new developer uh, will face a lot of hassle in, in angular 2 finding those answers and ionic 2.x answers both of them and uh, the other question like where the builds go so ionic is a uh, is an npm package that you install and then you can just uh, write in your project ionic uh, run android that will run it in your android device and when you ionic build android ionic build ios that will just create you the builds build files for you but how can i get the file? yeah you get that in the build folder as any code over project yeah from my local yes yes so you have you used any code over project in the past never okay but so I, I run on, uh, ionic one mm -hmm. and i saw uh, this framework uh, gave me iOS yeah. app and Android app. Right. But uh, I can't find out where the. In the build folder, you will have the builds. In the build folder, you, you read a little bit about Cordova, you will get to it. So it, it uses all the same uh, export uh, elements as Cordova app. And in the build folder, in your Ionic app, you have all the builds under iOS and Android folders. You, you get the build file. APK or a whatever the iOS file is. Uh, we still have like two minutes left, I guess. And uh, progressive decoupling, one person was asking. <laughs> so, okay, we'll take questions like in a minute. Really, we will go over time with the questions. We will we'll cover the slides first. Uh, so, progressive decoupling, like that's that's amazing way. Uh, I think that's great too. Progressive decoupling, like if you have a page which uh, where you need a lot of uh, uh, elements which requires to update quickly or you want to build out search functionality out of a long list but like you want to push it as an angular block into the page then you can you definitely use the Drupal block framework to, to build that particular angular piece and uh, that way you can do progressive decoupling and I think that is great the heavy elements which requires a lot of API calls I, I prefer uh, they should be decoupled uh, for example uh, like if you have a huge news website and the top section loads up a different kind of news from different sources also based upon location also based upon user interest so all those sections could be in that particular page could be loaded by a progressive decoupling as an angular block in Drupal and the rest of the page can still render as a normal page so in that in those kind of scenarios where you don't want to go completely ionic or uh, angular and you, you want to stay in your Drupal environment but still want to use some fancy uh, widgets that you can build that that in those parts progressive decoupling is really important
better it for easier sites. For example, like uh, thousands of user clicks are happening every second. It is better for, for business sites because you, they will be loaded on the browser. The block will be loaded, the data will be loaded on the browser. It won't take time on the server side to render it and then send the HTML. So that, that, that part will be handled, will be, page will fast much loader. That particular block can, can load later on. But the HTML that we are providing via Drupal, that can first load and show the data all on the page. So the heavy, heavy sections of the site can, can be like this. And the other tools I wanted to refer like React and Amber, they are pretty good. Uh, React is pretty good for building websites too. That is like uh, more where the whole world is uh, leaning towards because you can actually uh, compile the HTML on the servers and and then just uh, serve your HTML pages using React.js. So uh, that is something to be considered and uh, that is very hard to do in Angular 1.x for sure. There is there's a whole hack layer that you have to put on it to get to that. Uh, but React gives you isomorphism, isomorphic JavaScript applications out of the box. And Amber is again great. That is a uh, JS framework based upon Angular. And there are a couple of other tools in the market. I just wanted to really discuss Angular and how you can have quickly a new website out of it and uh, use the advanced frameworks, advanced, uh, advanced tools to do it. And if you like my session, please evaluate on Drupal.org. If you don't like it, no need to evaluate. <laughs> and thank you very much. Yes. No, I was just uh, referring. You should not make a HTTP GET request inside your controller. I, I showed that controller part uh, so that you can see where I am referring my scope dot blogs or scope. My scope variable was referred directly into the data. So I said that th that part should go into factories. Into factories. <coughs> Uh, that is the best practice I, I heard. Like you, you should. Uh, that that is actually your. Uh, so there are MVC model view and controller. So, so it's it's kind of like MVVC. So there is a there is a view for definitely. Then there is a view based controller. So controllers are actually feeding data to my views. So that part is actually aligned towards my making data for my view. And then the whole in the back end, I am defining my services uh, to to like generalize the REST output. So those services can be used anywhere else, wherever required in the project. Not, not just in that particular controller. If I want to fetch that particular block and put, render it as a block on my home page, the blog section, I can just refer to my service, and I can just uh, get the blog item and put it in a block on my home page after that. <laughs> Make sense? All right, thank you very much. And I'm Sumit Kadaria. And, uh, <clears throat> Sumit K on Twitter or Drupal.org, you can find me like that. And questions we already done. So no need to go back to the slide. <laughs>